Wounds. All right, guys, we got a uh, coach ready to roll after the uh, seventh practice. Did I get that right? Seventh. Um, so we'll start with an opening statement from coach and then get your uh, hands raised and in the queue and we'll get this thing started. So with that, coach, go ahead. Yeah, first, just want to address something from yesterday. Peter asked me about uh, the situation with Wisconsin. I believe the young man's name is Jake Black. Um, I'll admit I, I wasn't as aware of the situation as I needed to be. And, um, you know, so I, I made myself aware after the meeting and uh, just disappointed, extremely disappointed that we're having to address um, these situations again. Um, but, you know, it says in the good book, don't grow weary while doing good for in due time, you shall receive your reward if you do not lose a uh, heart. And, you know, we got to keep bringing attention because there is a real problem in the United States of America. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, we're striving to become a more perfect union and we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, the, the, the atrocities that have occurred on videotape um, in the last three months, um, they're not, it's not right. It, it's not right. And, and, um, you know, no matter, no matter what justification was used, uh, the, the, there was no reason for seven shots to be fired in that situation. And that's my opinion. And I, I feel, um, I feel for my football team. I feel for our coaches. Um, you know, I was sitting with one of my coaches today while we were seeing it on ESPN and, and just the, the pain. It, it, we've got to um, make reform. We've got to address the issue. So this does not continue to happen. And, um, and uh, I want to be part of the solution. Our football team wants to be part of the solution. We want to bring awareness to the situation. Um, and, and our prayers are with Jake. Our prayers are with the state of Wisconsin and the situation right now. And, and uh, you know, by no means, you know, I support the police and I support that there's good police officers, um, but the situation that occurred again for the third time and, and third time in three months, you know, we, we've got as the United States of America to continue to do better. And so with that, I'll open it up for questions. Natalie, it looks like you got your hand in there first. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Hope you're doing well. You know, obviously your team has a history of, you know, giving a voice. And, you know, obviously this summer had a march and things like that. I'm curious what kind of conversations you've had with your team, if you've heard any want from them to do something like that in the future, you know, as things grow more and more, you know, more and more of these come up. Yeah, you know, we haven't had any specific uh, conversations about this specific incident. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to our team at length about us trying to create change. We've launched uh, uh, we've launched several things throughout the summer to, to continue to bring awareness and cr promote change um, in a positive way. And that's what we're looking to do. I, you know, I don't know that there's going to be like a dramatic deal. Um, but I support our football team in bringing awareness to a situation that's a serious issue. And, and, um, and, and that's my job as a leader. Uh, and that's our job it, with the platform we have. We're going to represent Mizzou in the right way. Um, but we're also going to bring awareness to a situation that needs to, there needs to be conversations about change. And that's, you know, you, you got to have conversations and everybody's got to open their heart to have those conversations, me included. You got to open your heart and say, what am I missing? What, what am I missing? You know, what, what is going on here? And, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. Kaufman, go ahead. Coach, I saw uh, LaDamian Washington was out of practice today. Um, I, I heard he, he talked to the team. What, what was he talking maybe some, about about racial injustice or, or what, what did you have? LaDamian? No, I, yeah, we, we had LaDamian come address the team and, and he talked about uh, investment and return uh, and investing in yourself and who's all invested in you and getting a return on that investment and talking about how Mizzou invested in him and he owes it to Mizzou to return, uh, show a good return on that investment. And, and uh, it's just wanting to bless our kids. He's talked about the way he grew up and all the different things that he's endured and to see him, you know, be an example of chasing two dreams, a life with football and a life after football. He's an incredible ambassador for our program. He's got a great spirit and joy. And anytime our football team can be around somebody like that, uh, it, it's such a positive thing. You know, he, he, he really did a nice job of addressing our team and, and, and talking about them making an investment and people have made investments in them and they need to make sure they, they, they uh, make a good return. Dave Matter, go ahead. Eli, do you have any players or staff whose families' homes might be in danger with this hurricane down in Louisiana, Texas, Gulf Coast area? 
you know, we've, we've, uh, I, I'm not assured right now, uh, but, uh, you know, we've had our coaches ask and I, I'm not, I don't have the geography of all those guys. Um, but, uh, that's a, thank you for bringing that up and I'll, I definitely need to be on top of that. Peter, go ahead. Hi, Eli. Um, I was wondering, we've seen at like Oklahoma and LSU some, some situations where not even cause like a bunch of players have tested positive for COVID, but just through contact tracing, full position groups have kind of been worked, wiped out for practice. Has that been something that's happened at all at Mizzou? Did you say LSU? Yeah, I think they had like their offensive line because of. Did that come out today? Yeah, I think so. It's good to know. Yeah, let me write that down. Um, no, we have not had. Uh, we've had some contact tracing situation. Um, mostly roommates, when you get a COVID positive, usually tend to be automatically contact traced. Um, we have currently, I believe we have uh, maybe five in, in contact tracing and or in a quarantine situation. Uh, we do, I believe currently we have two active cases. Two active cases is where I believe we're at right now and, uh, and, and three other people uh, quarantine because of those active cases. Uh, we do, did another round of surveillance testing today. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're moving forward. Again, like I addressed yesterday, I think it's going to be the next two weeks. And we've talked to our team about this. It's really the next two weeks that's going to, you know, tell the tell the tape um, and, and see if, if we can continue to move forward in a positive way. We have not had uh, an entire position group wiped out. You know, I think we do a pretty good job uh, I know we do a dadgum good job inside the building, and these guys got to do a good job outside of the building. Yeah, you go ahead. Eli, with so much of the conversation and so many of the things that we've talked about to you uh, having very little to do with football over the last few months, I mean, these two, three hours you're on the field every day, do you find it a good respite? Do you find it harder to concentrate? Uh, you know, how do you approach that? Yeah, when we step across the white lines, it's football. And that's what we tell our staff. You step across those light, white lines, that's the whole punching bag I'm in. When you punch that bag, you're locked in for the day. You're clocked into what you're going to get done. And that's the, that's the focus. Uh, that's the focus. We don't have cell phones. We don't have Twitter. We don't have anything but a clock, a white line, and some football and some whistles, and, and me yelling at people when they're not running. And that's, that's about it. I, I, you know, I have no idea what's going on in the world. I get off and Sean starts telling me things that blow my mind. You tell me that LSU doesn't have an offensive line. Can we play tomorrow? But anyway, other than that, you know, let's, uh, that's, that's, yeah, I just coach ball. Our coaches coach, our players play. And uh, man, it's, it's, it's fun. God, we had fun today. We had a lot of fun today. Sweet. You go ahead. Hey, Eli, kind of a quick follow up on Peter's question, actually. Um, because of positional groups being kind of, you know, because of contact tracing and everything, have you considered doing things like maybe, you know, splitting them up or anything or different positional meetings or something? I know that's kind of happened. Yeah, as far as position meetings go, we all meet in large areas. We don't have anybody that doesn't have more than six feet apart. We don't have anybody that doesn't have uh, great ventilation, large open spaces. We utilize both our team room, defensive meeting room, recruiting lounge, locker room, uh, um, we utilize the uh, show me club. So all the space that we have in the Southeast end zone, we have set up four position meetings so that everybody's spaced out, spread out six feet, quarantine, contact tracing, masks on, um, the whole kit and caboodle. As far as we haven't maneuvered people from housing, you sign leases. I don't know what else I could do about that. We, we can't just rent hotels for the rest of the uh, of the season. So we're going to keep on living life, practice social distancing, wear masks, do what we're asked to do. And if we get contact traced, we get contact traced. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the risk we're taking with playing the game and, and, uh, and being in an imperfect bubble. Eric Long, go ahead. Hey, Eli, if I'm correct, I believe it was Kiki Chisholm today who was leading stretching. Uh, and if so, uh, He's in the program just like about two months in. So what does it mean to have a guy who's entered the program this quickly and is having given that privilege this quickly on? Happy birthday, Kiki Chisholm. He got to lead the Mizzou Jacks today. So two months, six months, happy birthday. He got to say, Mizzou Jacks ready. You know, so that, that was what that was. Excited for him, appreciate him. Uh, you know, 
but uh, it, 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 I mean, it was it was birthday. Ben, go ahead. Eli, uh, Ryan Walters, I know, was really optimistic about the cornerback group this year. I'm curious what your first impressions are of them right now with two starters being replaced, and especially with Alabama as a week one matchup uh, and that receiver core that they've got. Um, what, what sort of approach do you take to having two more experienced guys and then a lot of young guys behind them? Yeah, I mean – Crud, yeah, our dub's excited. They've been whipping our tail ends for the last six practices, so he's he's feeling real good about it. Um, I think we've got great potential there. I know that Coach Gibbs is an outstanding football coach, does a great job. We've got three coaches in the secondary because it's such an important position. He does an unbelievable job, five years NFL experience. Shoot, he may have more than that. He may have 12 years NFL experience. I don't know his resume off the top of my head, but he's got a lot of NFL experience. He knows exactly how to coach that position, the techniques. And that's what the kids want to know. They want to know, one, do you care about them? And two, can you help them improve? And David Gibbs does that. Ryan Walters does that. So guys are, are bought into that. We've got a lot of young guys. We've got great competition. Nothing, uh, only thing better than a little competition is a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition in that room. Um, really good players, you know, uh, Sparks, Jarvis Ware, um, Ennis Rakestraw, Ish Burdeen, J.C. Carlisle. I mean, the list goes on, and, and uh, so, yes, we're excited about that room. Our dub's excited about that room, and uh, like I said, they whipped our tail pretty good for four, five, six, seven, whatever days it is, so a lot of reason to be excited. All right. I don't see any more hands raised. Anything else for Coach before we let him go? Do we charge a ticket for Chris to be in here if he's not going to ask questions, or is it just a freebie? I'm making a list. I'm saving them, and when you least expect it, I'm going to unleash a ton of questions your way, Coach. You know, most people, when they retire, they go to play golf. Apparently, Chris <laughs> just logs on to Zoom calls all day. I'm just right? so interested. I'm, I've yeah. still got the interest. I'm going to try to see you this week later. If I, I'll, you are? Uh, well, bring a mask. I will. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay. All right. Here we go, boys. Y'all right. have a good one. Thanks, Coach. And girls.